All right, students, uh, this is a video showing you how to recode variables in Excel. I created a video already showing you how to recode variables in SPSS. And I pointed out that the reason why you might want to recode variables is because let's just say you're creating a frequency distribution for the variable age. And well, what's going to happen is the variable age has 71 categories, so 18 to 89 which means that if you create a frequency distribution, you're gonna have 71 categories and the frequency distribution is gonna be really difficult to read. And I don't wanna see 71 categories on your final paper. The other thing, reason why, is because when you're creating your cross tabs, again, there's just gonna to be too many categories to actually interpret the data. So ideally, when you have like interval ratio level variables like age or maybe even something like income and you have too many categories, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to condense the categories, right? So create a certain interval. So for example, instead of having like 18 to 89, 71 categories, I might do 18 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and so on. That way, the data is easier to manage and also it's easier to read the table and also easier to interpret cross tabs and graphs and stuff like that, okay? So how do you go about doing that? Okay, now, um, what I'm about to show you right here is probably, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it with Excel, but the thing is, it's easy to mess this up, so you need to be meticulous with what you're doing. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do this in Excel. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. And uh, so what we're gonna do first off is you're going to, oh, and another reason why you might wanna do this is just say you're looking at the variable religion. Well, I think religion has like 20 categories as well. And then, you know, some of the categories are like Protestant, Catholic, evangelical, you know, non-denominational person. I, I don't even know, I don't have them in front of me. But, you know, maybe you don't want to look at 20 categories of religion. Maybe you just want to put, like, Christians, Catholics, Protestants, evangelicals all into the same Christian religion. So you could recode that data with, with the procedure that I'm about to show you. Okay. So um, first thing that you're going to want to do is I typically tell you all not to play around with our actual data set because you can easily mess it up. You know, I always tell you to create a new sheet and then do all your analysis on that new sheet. But with this uh, recoding the variable, because you're probably going to want to do it for your final paper as well, you're probably actually going to want to do it within the data set. Okay, so what you're going to do is we're going to create a new variable based upon the existing variable, the variable age. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to find the variable age, which is right here. And I'm going to insert a new column. So insert. Okay, so I did that. And expand this a little bit because I need to like write a, write an equation, write a formula in here. Okay, so I'm going to na name this or label this maybe age recoded or you could do like age two or something like that. Just as long as you know that like age two or age recoded is the recoded age variable that you did. Like I said, you can do this with any variable. So I'm just going to put age recoded. Okay, so I got that. Now, here's where I need to actually type in a formula. Okay, now what you'd want to do is you're going to want to use the if formula. So what you're going to do is you're going to click equals to equals if, and then I'm going to do a left parentheses, then I'm going to put B2, actually D2, sorry, D2, and the reason why I'm doing D2 is because we're looking at the variable age. We're doing it for the second row, okay, so column D, row two, so D2. And we're going to say is if D2 is either less than or equal to, I'm just going to do it from 18 to 39 because I don't want to, uh, you know, just do 18, 20, 30, 39, 40, 49. This is too time consuming for me. And you know, since this is just to show you all how to do this, I'm just going to do 18 to 39. So I do is like if D2 is 39 or below. So the reason why I did less than n equal to is because if it's actually, yeah, so less than n equal to, so you do 39, so hit 39 at all those scores below. So anybody who's 18 to 39 is going to be lumped into this category. Okay, so it's less than or equal to 39, comma, then I do parentheses is equal to one. Okay. Now, when you see these numbers in these other, you know, for all the other variables and you see all these numbers, you know that we have a code book. Right, so you can just reference the code book to know that you know, I don't know, per child or 
Bible 2 means something, right? But with this, when, since you're recoding the data, it's not going to show up in the code book. So you need to remember that 1, maybe write it down somewhere, you need to remember that 1 is equal to 18 to 39. Or if you put it 18 to 29, you didn't make sure that you know that 1 is equal to 18 to whatever. Okay. Now, after I got that for the 1, then I, let's just say I want to do 40 to 59. Okay, so I'm doing like 20 year increments. Okay, 40 to 59. So, what I'd have to do here now that I've got that is I'm going to put a comma, then I'm going to put if again, and then I'm going to do a left parenthesis. Notice that I don't have a right parenthesis there, that's going to be all towards the end. So, I'm going to do a left parenthesis. Okay, then I'm going to put B or D2. D2 is uh, less than. Actually, uh, okay, so less than or equal to 59, okay, then we're going to say that that is 2, okay, which means that, you know, 40 to 59, okay. Now after I do that, for the last one, I'm just going to do 18 to 39, 40 to 59, then 16 over. I'm trying to make this a little simple for myself. So then we're going to do if again. Then we're going to do a left parenthesis. Then we're going to put D2 is um, greater than or equal to 60. So 60 or higher. Then we're going to put parentheses 3. But let's uh, Excel know that we're going to code all of those as 3. So we're going to and we're going to do three right parentheses. One, two, three. Now, why am I doing three right parentheses? Because there's supposed to be a parentheses here, but there's not. There's supposed to be a parentheses here. So one, two, three. And then I believe that this is uh, the formula here. So now, well, sometimes you just got to play around with it a little bit to figure it out. So I'm going to press enter and see what happens. Okay, good. So I know that like because this is this 89 age is over the age of 60. Right, so it should be three. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make sure that it did it the right way. So I'm going to copy, then I'm going to scroll down to let's just say 30th. Okay, so it seemed to work, right? So if you're under the age of 40, right, then you're labeled as one. If you're 40 to 60, you're labeled as two. And if you're 60 and over, you're three. Okay, so it worked. So now that I know that this worked, I need to do it for all the uh, respondents. So it's going to keep on copying this formula and then get it to all 1,500 respondents. Okay, so I got all 1,500 respondents. All right, looks good to me. All right, now that I have that, what I'm going to do is I need to now um, copy both of these uh, variables over. I'm going to copy them. So, and then also when you're creating a uh, Whenever you're moving stuff around, you're creating a new sheet to run analysis, you need to copy both of them over, okay? So I'm gonna copy both of them over, both age and then the age recoded. That messed up somehow, so. All right, so we're going to copy both of these variables over together. And the reason why we need to copy both of them together, because this age recoded is based off of this age, and it's based off of it with a formula. So if I were to just copy over the age recoded without the age, what's going to happen is, is it has a formula that's based upon this. Because that's not next to it, um, it's not going to work anymore. Okay, so I'm going to come over here, go over to sheet two, and I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to paste. Okay, so I got age, age recoded. Now, like I said, if I were to create a pivot table or if I were to create a frequency distribution for the variable age, let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to put insert pivot table. I know I'm going a little fast, but like we covered this stuff already in like previous chapters. So I'm assuming you all know how to do this by now. So I'm press put this here, put a pivot table, then I'm going to take the variable age, I'm going to put it down to rows and then Values, okay, so the count of age is obviously the frequency. The row labels are the values. So as you can see, when you look at this frequency distribution, it's 1889. It's just really, really hard to interpret. There's just too, too many respondents. So if I were to create a frequency distribution for the variable of age recoded, it's going to be a lot neater, a lot easier to manage. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to press insert and I'm going to put pivot table. So I'm just going to put the pivot table pretty close to it, right over here. Press OK. So now I have the variable age recoded. So I'm going to take age recoded. I'm going to put it to the rows and then the values. I'm going to get rid of this blank because nobody didn't answer that. So I'm going to uncheck the blank. I'm going to press OK. OK. Now that we have that, we have one which we already established. I'm going to label it so age coded. We established that one is um, 18 to 29. So I'm going to put 18 to, 18 to 39 here. 18 to 39. Two is 40 to 59. And then three is 60 and then plus or 60 and up. And then you can put 60 up if you want to. And then that's how you can actually recode the data. And then obviously you can run the, run the analysis with the analysis, you know, for like a, a cross data in the same way. Okay. Um, so that's how you recode the data uh, in uh, Excel. Um, so if you want to, you could like, you know, make it look like a genuine frequency distribution where you have the frequency, you have the percentage, and then you have the cumulative percentage. But like I said, I'm not going to do all that right now because I showed you how to do that in a, in a different video. So just reference that. Other than that, um, uh, if you're using Excel, like I said, it's substantially harder than um, SPSS, but, uh, you know, hopefully you can just reference back this video if you're using Excel.